Great. Um, I want to thank you for coming to tonight's last freshman orientation. We've had two um, orientations solely for the students, and tonight is our second one for the parents. If there's a student nearby, definitely have them sit next to you and um, listen because it's only going to be beneficial from them to hear um, kind of what I have to say about the Brian McMahon High School Athletic Program. Um, I want to first congratulate all the parents on um, a job well done. Your child um, is moving from middle school and they will now be entering the best four years of their lives at the high school level. And um, I, I have reached daughters myself and I, I do know that they definitely enjoyed their high school years um, much more than their middle school years. Um, I'm a graduate of Brian McMahon High School. I grew up in Norwalk. I graduated in 1991. I played sports at Brian McMahon, was captain of the baseball team. Um, I then left for a short period of time to go to college and then I came back and I started to teach and I've been a teacher for over 20 years. This is going to be my second year as the athletic director. I was um, the baseball coach for about 18 years. Um, so for tonight, what we're going to do is we're going to have a general presentation, give you guys some background. If you're a parent um, familiar with the program, some of this will be repetitive, but it's always good to kind of review. Then we're going to have a couple coaches and student athletes um, talk about um, their programs, and then we'll have a little question and answer session. I apologize for any noise that might be in the background. Um, I do have a little dog, and I have children coming in and out, so you might hear a door slam every now and then or a little dog bark. Um, so. Um, let's get after it. Now, this screen's important because all the contact information for me is there, my email address, my phone number, and the website. The website's gonna be very important because that's kind of like the holder of all the information I'm gonna present to you and where you should go for most of your information. Um, I believe communication is probably one of the most important things any leader can do, so that's my main goal is to communicate clearly and effectively our programs, and that's something that I want my coaches to do as well. Alrighty, there's our seniors from last winter, the last group that played at Brian McMahon High School. Um, let's go. So the Brian McMahon High School is a member of the FCAC, the CIAC, and the NFHS. Those are acronyms for um, the Fairfield County Interscholastic Athletic Conference. That's our local region that we play in. It's probably, it's the best conference um, in the States, by far, most of the state championships come out of the FCAC. Um, we are very, very proud of that. We rival the SDC. Um, they kind of claim that they're the best. The FCAC claims we're the best, but night in, night out, the competition in the FCAC is fierce. We have people who are all Americans. We have people going to the top division one programs. We have top ranked programs in the nation. It's very, very intense. Now, that league is one of many that's part of the Connecticut Interscholastic Athletic Conference. You probably heard a lot lately about the CIAC because they've been talking a great deal about um, the suspension of school sports back in March in the state tournaments, and now they're talking about re-engaging our student athletes in athletics. That um, group, the CIAC, is part of the largest country, nationwide, I should say, organization, the National Federation of High School. So the National Federation of High School kind of sets rules and standards passed down to the state, um, which then has their own rules and standards, and then down to the FCAC that has their own rules and standards. And that's basically how the um, organization is organized. Now, for some of you, this is gonna be the first time that your child is playing educational-based high school athletics. And it's really important to understand it's educational-based because we truly believe that the field, the court, the pool, um, are all extensions of the classroom. And we feel that sometimes the best lessons that the student athletes will ever learn are actually on those courts and on those fields during competition as they learn to overcome, you know, some struggles as they reach their goals, as they sweat and grind it out with their teammates, um, as they suffer through tough losses, and then they feel exalted when they win. Um, our coaches are well trained. They are going to teach sport specific skills and also conditioning principles that go along with those sports. And as I said before, sports is a vehicle that we're going to teach life lessons and create bonds. And at this present time in our country, there's no better way to show unity is through um, high school athletics because you can see people from all different types of backgrounds coming together as one. And I just think if we turn to our high school athletes, they'll probably teach us more lessons or they'll teach us, teach us the lessons that we can truly benefit from. 
Um, all of our coaches, since it is a um, educationally based, they are all certified um, in CPR, first aid, and automated external defibrillators. They have um, schooling in concussion awareness, sudden, car sudden cardiac arrest, and any type of heat-related illness. When I first started out, it was just CPR and first aid, and they slowly added many more features. So our coaches are definitely, as I said, well-trained. They also are required to take a number of content continuing education courses to improve their understanding of their craft. Most of those are fo focused on the educational components of athletics. Most of our coaches are teachers. And um, as I said, as I, as I am, I was an alumni of Ryan McMahon. We have a number of other coaches that are alumni and many are Norwalk residents. So you truly have a staff that is from the community. Um, to participate in athletics and to try out, um, all student athletes are gonna have to have their parents first register on our new registration system called Final Forms. Once the student athlete's parents registers and creates an account for the student athlete, the student athlete's gonna get an email and then they will be able to register and complete their forms. Um, in addition, once a high school athlete enters Brian McMahon High School and they're here for one quarter, they will all have to abide by a 1.7 GPA. It's a C minus average. Most of our student athletes though um, exceed that. Quite frankly, most double that and they're in the 3.4 or above and some are so gifted that they actually triple it by taking a large number of AP classes, IB classes and so forth. Um, it's also important that all student athletes have a physical um, into the school's nurses prior to the start of season. If you don't turn in that physical, you will not be able to participate. Um, at this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to our website so I can show you where you would actually go about registering. Emily, can you see the website? Okay, Sydney, yeah, you're giving it up. Okay, fantastic. So this is our main website. Just want to kind of show you a couple of things. Um, important areas that you should really take a look at. You should definitely look at the coaches' contact info. Any question you have for any of our coaches, all their emails are listed right there. Um, that's where you're going to go for sport-specific information. Um, we also, if you're interested, you can read all my newsletters from the past 33 weeks. I just sent out my... Um, Oh, I just sent out my most recent one today um, to close out the year. Um, I do that on a weekly basis, as I said, for communication purposes, but also to highlight the achievements of our student athletes. Um, so for registration purposes, all you have to do is come to this link right here and click on it. Um, once you get here, it's going to give you the specific steps. There's an English and a Spanish version there. Um, if you speak another language, once you get in, I think it's on the second page, you can actually translate the document into over 40 different languages. So I think we have that all covered. Um, the directions um, are really self-explanatory. Um, and this is going to be a great way that we're going to be able to collect your data and make it a safer environment for you and your child because we're going to have all the information that we need to properly in, um, connect you or connect us with you if case there's ever an emergency, but we also have the medical background there as well. Um, I'm gonna head back now to our presentation. So the expectations of a high school athlete are a little bit different from maybe some recreational league athletics or also um, some travel teams, but we acqu we require our student athletes to be at all games and meets and practices. That's just a basic requirement. Our student athletes are well balanced. They're able to juggle their busy schedules, their really family lives um, and their academics. Um, we expect them to participate in fundraising because that helps kind of um, increase the swag gear and any other um, items that the school cannot provide for them to enhance their athletic programs. Um, they do a number of team building events, um, and they're expected to travel to and from the games with their team on the bus. Generally, on a daily basis, they're going to commit anywhere from two to four hours. Early in the season, the commitment is much longer, and also on game days, especially if they're traveling away. So it's going to be somewhere between two to four hours. Weekly, they're going to be practicing five to six days. 
Um, I would say that most freshman teams will probably be competing um, and, and practicing probably closer to five than six. But as they progress up, they and if they play on the JV or varsity team, that they would possibly participate six days. And then the season lengths are all different, too. It depends on the sport. Our longest season is um, football, which goes from mid-August to um, Thanksgiving Day. And then the basketball season and the track seasons are pretty long as well. Um, the shortest season that we have is cross country. Um, that's generally, um, it starts last week of August and runs to about the end of October, but anywhere from nine to 14 weeks. Um, our typical season begins with a preseason conditioning programs. Right now, um, all of our coaches that are in the fall and in the winter and spring can have online contact with your child um, and provide them with some conditioning activities. Um, beginning July 6th, we're going to be entering a new phase in the state of Connecticut where coaches can actually meet in small groups with their student athletes under a number of restrictions. Um, once the preseason's pre done, we get into the tryouts. And the tryouts are going to be um, in August. Um, the date is to be determined right now because we're waiting to get clearance from the state. And then hopefully our COVID-19 cases um, continue, continue to trend down. Uh, but those tryouts, when they do occur, um, are going to be two days or longer if there's a tryout. There's a number of teams that don't have tryouts. The teams that generally have tryouts are your more competitive teams. Um, like, for example, boys soccer last year had over 120 boys try out, and they only had room for about 50 to 60 boys, depending on the team. So on that sport, very competitive at Brian McMahon High School, that you have to make cuts because you can't accommodate all the kids. So that's why those conditioning programs are – um, important so those kids come in and they're ready to go. The regular season will consist of practices and scrimmages um, and then games within our conference, the FCAC, and then possibly there'll be some non-conference play. Um, that's the majority of the actual season. Our quest and our goal for every team is to for them to qualify for the FCAC and the state tournaments. Last fall we had a number of teams qualified in this um, winter we did as well. Um, in order to um, qualify for the FCAC tournament, it's much harder than the state tournament. The FCAC tournament, generally, you have to be in the top eight, usually, for your sport. That's on average. Um, for the CIAC, they, generally, you have to just win 40% of your games. It's much harder to win a state tournament, though, than the FCAC tournament because you have to win up to, like, five games for that. And our enrollments are based off of our different sizes, classes, um, and it gets kind of confusing sometimes because there's class M, there's class L, and there's class double L, let's say, for um, baseball. But if you go to lacrosse, there's just class L, M, and S. And then if you get into basketball, there's a bunch of different conferences based off their success. So those types of questions and answers are going to be best answered by your coaches when you have individual meetings when the fall comes around or possibly this summer. Um, all right. All right. So our fall offerings – um, our football, soccer, and cross country for the males and for the females, we have field hockey, soccer, cross country, swim and dive, um, volleyball. And you can also see at the very bottom, you'll see unified sports going straight across. Um, unified sports is a, a great program because what it does is it, mix, it mixes our um, student athletes um, who participate usually on our high school teams with some of the student, uh, some of our athletes um, our, and students in our school that um, – you know, struggle to compete at the same exact level. So that's what unified sports is. It's, it's kind of very, very similar if you can kind of think of um, a special Olympic type program with the integration of the regular high school athlete. And we offer that program throughout the year. Um, next to the names of each of the sports that you see offered, you're going to see V, a V, a JV, or an F. That's the level that we have, um, we offer for competitive play. Um, so for example, football, we have a freshman team that competes, a JV team that competes and a varsity team competes. But if you look at like, for example, girl soccer, we just have a varsity and a JV team. Um, the reason why you're going to see different, um, teams in the way they compete is based off of the numbers that come out for those teams. Um, it changes, um, depending on the numbers. Like for example, we added a freshman volleyball team this year because over the last couple of years, the volleyball team has um, increased in numbers. Plus the volleyball team's unique because of the fact that they don't compete with any other teams for field space or gym space. Cause it's just them. 
um, when you start to add additional teams um, on the fields, it gets very, very um, complicated. Um, you're also going to see with the swim and dive team an asterisk right next to it, um, and that denotes that that is a co-op team. Um, a co-op team designation basically means that the numbers of Ryan McMahon High School and Norwalk High School are so low that they can't field their own team and be competitive. So what ends up happening is those teams combine and they form a competitive team. Um, that is based off of a three-year period of time. If our numbers were to grow um, and get high, or if Norwalk High's numbers were continue to grow, then the team would have to be um, disassembled and then each school would have to have their own team and then unfortunately what would probably result is a less competitive team. So it's also it's very very important that we keep those swim and dive teams um, together and intact. Um, as we move into our winter offerings you're going to see um, basketball, indoor track, hockey, swim and dive for the males and wrestling and also you're going to see um, for the females basketball, indoor track and hockey. Um, one thing I do want to point out is that just because you see a sport listed as a male doesn't mean that you can't have a female compete. Um, we have a number of girls who do compete on the girls wrestling team. And we, in fact, had one of our wrestler, uh, wrestlers last year. She competed in the state championship. And that was a really exciting time to see last winter. And it's definitely one of my highlights to seeing her compete at that level. Um, we are the host of the hockey team. We um, host that team with Noah Kai. Um, the swim team for the boys and the dive team is co-opted with Norwalk High. They are the host team, and the girls' hockey team um, consists of three teams in a co-op. The host team is Wilton, so it's Wilton, Brian McMahon High School, and Norwalk, and their home rink is in Ridgefield, and that's where they practice. So if anyone had um, interest in actually participating on the female hockey team, you would have to provide um, transportation to Ridgefield whenever they do have practice or when they have games. We have about four girls who participated on the hockey team last year. Um, in the spring, we have baseball, outdoor track, tennis, lacrosse, and golf. And for female sports, we have softball, outdoor track, tennis, and um, lacrosse for the females as well. Um, so we have a number of opportunities for all of, of our student athletes to compete and to excel. Now, as far as communication goes, as I said earlier, we have three main forms that I'm going to, three ways I should say that I will communicate with you. Um, as I said earlier, I'm going to have a weekly newsletter that's going to be sent out to you, and that's going to highlight the events the past week, highlighting some pretty good performances, talk about upcoming events that are taking place, and that's on a weekly basis. Um, we also have our new registration place, um, re registration process and um, final forms. And that is going to be an occasional email communication coming from the site. And it's going to remind you that you, A, you didn't fill out some forms or that you might have a physical expiring. Um, but these are types of things that you're going to have to pay careful attention to early in the year prior to registration. And then, if you, of course, if you're um, email, and I'm sorry, but if your physical is expiring, you would um, get updates from that. They're going to send you a general automatic email at 60 days, 30 days, 15 days, five days, and on the day that it actually expires. Um, and then there's Sports U. Sports U is going to be daily communication between the, um, myself, the coaches, the players, and the parents. And this is a great way for you to learn about the programs. It's really, really important that um, your child signs up for their fall sports U team um, tonight. I'm just going to go back to the website to show you where that can be done. All right. So to access the sports U information, the best thing for you to do is to go to the bottom of this toolbar and touch documents. Um, I have a number of documents in here, but if you scroll down, because they are listed alphabetical, you're going to find all the different types of Sport U teams that are there. All you have to do, for example, is just click on Sport U Girls Soccer, and then what you're going to do is you're going to get your access code. Now, this access code can be used by both the um, players and the parents, all right? And there's different ways to join. You can join via website or via app. Um, I've learned in my first year as an athletic director that emails don't get read very quickly. 
And sometimes they get lost in the email deluge that we get on a daily basis and more people are apt to look at those different mobile apps. Um, so this is why we're kind of going over to this system. I do want to show you what it kind of looks like here um, in the feed. Um, because I know a lot of our coaches have actually already been on it. Um, is the Sports U page coming up right now? Okay. So, like, for example, if I go to the BMHS Volleyball, Coach Giorgio has a, a, a site up, and he's been active already. His number of members on his team, um, I think he has over, like, 30 girls on there. Um, yeah, 27 players. Um, and his posts are on there as well. That's my lengthy email today. Let's see, does Coach have anything on there? Yep, so like Coach Giorgio here um, posted a video recently about um, the effort that a sophomore um, displayed while she was playing middle back defense. Um, for me, as a baseball guy, I really don't know what it means, but if you're a volleyball player, Emily Bula-Kambasi will know exactly what that is and everybody else. But this is a great site for everyone to go to. Um, I know that the girls' soccer team has been actively using it as well. Um, I know, like, tomorrow night, they already have a girls' freshman um, Zoom scheduled for tomorrow. So that's something you definitely want to take part in. All right, let's go back. The other types of um, communication will be through social media. We have Instagram and a Twitter account. Um, I find that kids follow Instagram much better than Twitter. I learned that about halfway through. Twitter is for old people, um, it seems, but Instagram is a little bit more hip. Um, and they definitely follow it. My followers on Instagram are up to about 500. Um, I know that's a pretty low number, but I'm kind of proud of it, considering that I'm a rookie at this. You go, Mr. Cloth. Oh, thank you, Emily. Um, another great feature that we have, all the games on Castle Grand Field in the Keogh King Gymnasium are all live stream. Um, this is also found on our website. It's, I think it's the third um, button down on the left. Um, it will broadcast all the games that we play, freshman, JV, and varsity. And you can go back and watch games right now from the past year. This is a service that we think is definitely very beneficial to our family. Um, when I say family, the McMahon family, because parents uh, who can't attend a game could possibly um, watch them live stream on their computer or their app, or grandma and grandpa who can't make it to the game or live out of state can still watch and follow their kids. Um, and this is a service that we provide. It is pricey and expensive, um, and we're gonna be looking for try to fund this in different ways in the future. As I said before, the website's very, very important for everybody to go to. If you want the latest swag, um, you can head to our sideline store, which is on the Brian McMahon High School uh, website. I think it's like the fourth tab down on the left. Um, you can get your latest gear, all with the different types of Senator logos that we offer. Um, lots of options for family members too. And you get bibs for little babies. Um, just to kind of highlight a couple things, we do produce some outstanding student athletes. Um, this is just some who've moved on to the college ranks. These um, images that you actually see are posted in our weight room last year to kind of instill a little pride in our student athletes. Um, I started putting these up for anybody who graduated from Brian McMahon and then went on to a college and graduated while they played. And I just think this is just a great way to show what's possible and the range and variety of athletes that we have. Um, in the lower right-hand corner, you'll see um, one of my former baseball players, um, Edwin Awala, who went to Harvard. Right now, he's in school to become a doctor at Harvard, but he was such a gifted um, musician at Brian McMahon High School. He was invited to Fenway Park to actually play the national anthem. Really talented kid. Um, um, not listed on here, but um, definitely in the video presentation um, are also highlights the number of, um, Mc, not McDonald's, but Gatorade players of the year that we've had. In the past year, we had, a, last couple of years, we've had about five coming from our school, which is really, really great. Um, at this point in time, we're in the presentation, we're going to turn it over to some of our student athletes to talk about some of the programs that they're involved in so that you can um, hear firsthand from their experiences. 
So um, since she's at the top of the screen, um, I'm gonna start off with Emily Bula Campasi. That name I finally figured out when I announced it probably about at the end of the volleyball season last year. It just rolls off the tongue once you get it. So Emily, go ahead and talk about volleyball. Hello, I'm Emily. I'm one of the volleyball captains and I'm a senior this year. Um, I would say that being on varsity since a freshman, I learned a lot. And I think the volleyball team is definitely not only about sports, but it's also it became like my second family and we don't only make sure that we come out as good athletes but also as good people and we learn a lot of things and we make sure to use whatever we learn in school in the court and I would say that we have a pretty strong program and we are really skilled and we're so connected with each other, which makes it even better because it's like we can always run to, to each other to like help each other out or if we have questions. And our coaches like have done such a good job being there for us, not as coaches only, but almost as parent figures, which I absolutely love. And I think that it's definitely one of the best teams that I've ever been part of. Thank you, Emily. Thank you. Um, if the coaches are like your parents, I guess that means I'm kind of like the grandfather, which is kind of um, disturbing because I'm so young. Um, all right, next up, we're going to have um, Sydney Molivar talk about um, girls soccer program. Um, hi, I'm Sydney. I'm a current junior, so I'm going to be a senior next year. I'm also one of the captains of the girls' soccer team. Um, girls' soccer is just a great program. I love it. I'm biased, but it's okay. Um, I started on JV my freshman year due to an injury and moved up and ended up being a starter for the past three years. Um, I'm super excited coming into my senior year, and if your daughter is coming to play girls' soccer, I'm very excited to meet them. Um, <laughs> girls soccer is super fun. We do a lot of team bonding activities. One of my favorite ones is sisters that we do, where um, you actually get a upperclassman, so a junior or senior, a freshman or sophomore gets an upperclassman. And they're kind of like your sister or your like mentor. Um, you guys trade snacks, you help each other out, you decorate each other's lockers, you, you're just, it's a great thing to do at the beginning of the year, and especially, like, coming in as a freshman, you don't really know anybody, like, my, coming in as a freshman, I was so lucky to have um, Marisha, who was my soccer sister, as um, a mentor and a guide, and just to, like, be there for me, and it's so helpful when you come into the school year and you have someone there, so that's just a little bit about soccer, but I hope you all come join. <laughs> Thank you, Sid. Um, Leonardo Guzman, I'm pretty sure here from the boys soccer team. Want to talk about boys soccer? Yeah, um, my name is Leonardo Guzman. I have been on varsity since uh, my freshman year, and um, I'm also the captain for the fall. The team is family, and we do almost everything together in and out of soccer. All I wanted to say before trials is to work very hard and, um, and try your best to make varsity. But if you don't make varsity, at least you can make, you can try out for JV and freshman. Good luck. Thank you, Leonardo. Um, next up, I'm going to have Neem Linehan talk. She um, plays girls soccer, but she's a um, three-sport athlete. So she's going to talk briefly about her experiences playing three sports. Um, and she'll also talk about the indoor and outdoor track teams. Neem? Hi, um, I'm Neem. I'm currently a junior. Um, as Mr. Cross said, I'm captain of both soccer and indoor and outdoor track um, coming up this year. Um, for track, the coaches are unbelievably supportive and welcoming. I've known both the coaches for the past eight years because my brother was on the team, and they've just grown up with me, and they've been like a mentor, just as coaches are. But it's such a great learning experience, and the people you meet are so fun and welcoming. It's like a big family. Um, it's like different groups of people, so it's very diverse, and it's just a really fun experience. It helps you grow as both a person and an athlete, and I highly encourage your uh, kids to join because it's the best time. It's also just a great way to stay in shape for the season. Um, for soccer, one of the best seasons I enjoy the most. Um, the memories that you make are unbelievably exciting. Um, 
so yeah I'd recommend joining both track and soccer it's really fun all right fantastic thank you very much Steve um uh, let's see Brandon you're there too right buddy yes can you just kind of, since you're here, why don't you talk about being a um, multi-sport athlete since you play soccer and also um, basketball? Yeah, I think it's good to play multi-sports, especially uh, in high school. I mean, being a multi-sport helps with like different movements. You're not overusing your body on the same on the same body parts, so, you, so less injuries can be caused. Uh, and you also get to compete more and meet new students that you might not see in your regular day classes or in the hallways. So it's just good to get different types of different groups at your school and I just feel like it's a huge advantage especially with different body movements like I have movements in soccer that I can use an advantage in basketball and there's movements in basketball that I can use an advantage in soccer so it goes both ways so I think that if your freshman wants to play multi-sports that they should go for it. Thank you Brandon. Um, at this time um, coach um, Guzman from the soccer team would like to say a couple words. Uh, buenas noches, uh, good evening. Uh, the biggest advice I can give any freshman coming in is definitely, definitely being shaped. We will have between 30 to 50 freshmen come out for tryouts. We will only take 20 players plus three goalies, so that's 23 uh, spots that we will have available. Uh, we welcome you with open arms. Uh, try out for Bar City. I always tell my players, try to go for the biggest team you can, because if you don't make that one, then you go to JV. And if you don't make that one, you go to freshman. It gives you more touches, gives you more opportunities for myself, uh, Coach uh, John, Coach Julio, and Coach Spencer to see you on the field, because they'll be at the varsity level, which will be the first tryouts. They'll be at the JV level, second tryouts. Freshman will go last. Uh, so that's my biggest advice. Uh, get ready because you will be playing or practicing five days a week. You'll be playing between uh, eight, uh, six to eight games uh, within the eight weeks. But if you make varsity, you'll be playing six days a week, and you'll be playing between 22 to 26 games in three months. So we welcome you with open arms. We love uh, to have you here. And parents, don't worry. We will take care of your kids. Thank you, Coach Guzman. All right, um, this time um, we're gonna go through some common questions. Um, I anticipated maybe about 25 questions that you may ask, and I know usually people don't ask them, so I ask them for you, and I have all the answers. Um, if at Sometimes I may defer to some of the coaches that are here, or maybe even for the athletes, but I'm just gonna kind of go through them quickly. Um, as I said earlier, girls can play boy sports. Title IX offers that opportunity to them. Boys cannot play on a girls team. I know the question always comes up about field hockey. Hey, we don't have a, an equivalent for males. Um, Title IX does not give the same opportunity to boys, um, so they cannot play um, field hockey or any other female sports. Can you play more than one sport in a season? No. In the high school level, you're only able to play one sport. The one exception to that is if you are a, a fall, winter, or spring athlete and you're a part of the unified sports program, because the Unified Sports Program is um, a non-competitive program, which is only enhancing the well-being, um, emotional, physical well-being of some of students that are disadvantaged. Um, so that's one instance in which you can play both. Um, there are no fees to play high school athletics in, in Norwalk. However, um, there are times where you will have to fundraise and kind of help out. And you would be asked to contribute to some of the pasta dinners that they have or maybe a bake sale. Um, and they also ask for time as well. Um, is insurance provided by the school district? Um, what the school district will do is we will pay for um, any type of medical coverage that your initial coverage does not cover. So let's say if your, your son or daughter was injured and your insurance company only picks up 75% of that, our insurance coverage would pick up the remainder. Um, and that's only if the student athlete was hurt while while they were practicing or playing at um, Brian McMahon or against um, another team at another site. Um, what happens if you can't make tryouts because of um, a previously scheduled event? Um, the best thing you can do is 
teach your child right away to contact a coach. It's important that your child starts becoming an adult and starts taking care of their affairs. So I would definitely have your son or daughter email the coach and start a line of communication. Um, this should be something that um, isn't sprung upon the coach the day before because we don't like surprises just like parents. But if you know, like for example, that you have a wedding to go to during the tryout time, communicate that to the coach. Um, you're freshmen, so we want you to be part of our programs. We're not going to get rid of you, that's for sure. Um, as you get older and you're um, expected to play on the varsity level, um, you know, we definitely encourage you to stay away from um, conflicts. But even then, um, the family commitments are going to be ones that you can't really avoid. You know, your sister only can get married once and you only can be a maid of honor. So that's, you're just going to go to that. Um, physicals last for 13 months um, from the time that, that the physical occurs. Um, so that's something that you need to kind of be aware of. Check the dates of the last physical. If your last physical was, um, let's say for um, July of 2019, that means that physical is going to be good until, um, let's say, August 15th of 2020. Um, as I mentioned before, um, we do, um, if a situation does occur in which your child does get hurt, you're lucky because we have one of the best athletic trainers around. Um, Ashley Labrador um, is our full-time athletic trainer. She's with us at Brian McMahon from two o'clock to um, the last varsity game is over. She loves the kids. The kids love her. Not only does she you know, help the kids physically, but she also helps them emotionally, um, psychologically, gives them great advice. She's just, she's just there um, for the kids. So that's something just to kind of, to, um, feel comfortable about that you have Ashley. I'm always comfortable because she's there because she takes charge. And um, in fact, um, one time we were in her interview and she got a call and she went down and um, gave CPR to a, a, a parent who collapsed on the field and helped save her life. Um, as a lot of the athletes said, um, I know two of them, I think maybe three of them, maybe even four, as freshmen, they actually played at the varsity level. Um, this is something we're not going to shy away from. If a freshman's good enough to play at the varsity level, we're going to promote them to play. Um, I would never expect for you to tell your child that, hey, I think you're good enough to make the varsity team. Um, but I think you can encourage them that, you know, if you work hard and you give it your all and your coach thinks that you're good enough, you're going to play varsity. Because all of our coaches um, at the varsity level are there to make sure that they put the best teams on the field. It doesn't matter if they're a freshman, sophomore, junior, or senior. And it also doesn't really matter if someone transfers in halfway through the season. You know, if, if I, I'm the um, girls volleyball coach and all of a sudden I get a girl move um, from Pennsylvania into my town and she's 6'5 um, and she could jump, I'm putting her on that court because it's only going to enhance, you know, that experience for all those kids. Um, I think I already talked about um, a co-op team. Oh, back to expectations for freshman, junior varsity, and varsity sports. Um, the expectations for student athletes are the same across the board. Time commitments, going to practices, going to games. Um, the only thing I would say that we will um, expect from the kids uh, that's a little bit different is that we know that our freshman and junior varsity players uh, have a growing curve and, and they're going to kind of make mistakes and we understand that. We don't expect them to all be the best. That's why they're playing at the sub varsity level. Um, so we gradually bring them along. And then if you're in a program like, let's say, for cross country and there's only a varsity team, um, that coach knows that they're going to gradually bring along those freshmen and JV caliber players as well. Um, so it's, it's something that um, you shouldn't have to worry about too, too much. The only thing is at the varsity level, it's important that they go out and they try to win the games as much as possible. Um, what happens if my child doesn't make a team? Can they try out for another team during that season? This happens quite frequently. Um, this only really works for freshmen. And um, let's say if like we were saying that Coach Rodrigo um, had a 50 freshman boys come out and your son's didn't make the team, but he's a really good runner. Could he go and try out or participate in cross country? Absolutely. Um, could he possibly even go and join the football team? Absolutely. 
Um, the only time it can't happen is when the first game has been played or if he plays a game and decides, you know, halfway through the first game, hey, I, I'm not playing. I don't like this sport anymore. I'm going to go play another sport. It doesn't work that way. So those decisions would have to um, be made earlier than rather on. Can students in the Center for Global Study play sports at Brian McMahon? Um, they made a little change this year, um, which does have an impact. Only freshmen from the city of Norwalk can play sports at Brian McMahon High School if they, attend for, if they attend Center for Global Studies. So if someone is from out of district and attending Center for Global Studies, they will no longer be able to play at Brian McMahon High School. Um, I do want to let you know that there is a committee in place that's going to try to appeal this decision, and I'm part of that process. We were working on that prior to the coronavirus um, epidemic, but we hope to get back to that once um, school ends. Will students miss classes because of athletic games? Absolutely will, um, especially freshman players, because freshman athletes generally play right after school, and because of the change in start time, we get dismissed an hour later. However, the rest of the league did not adjust their times. So most high school athletics for freshmen start around four o'clock. So that means we would have to probably be at that site at least by 315. Um, and that's the time we get out of school. And you factor in the bus rides and getting changed. You're going to have a lot of people missing their last period class when they're student athletes this year. And that's just something we did warn the committees about. Um, however, they felt that the student athletes getting a little bit more sleep is a little bit more beneficial than them missing classes. Um, all right, let's see. Um, my child plans on being on the swim team. Will there be transportation to Nauk High? The answer to that is no. The good thing about that is that there's a lot of carpooling goes on because everybody's kind of like in the same boat when they work together. If there is a meet, though, you will get transportation to the meets that's an away meet. So if you had a meet in Greenwich or Stanford, you're going to get on a bus at Brian McMahon High School. It will then go pick up your teammates at Noah High and then go to the swim meets. Um, with that being said, the swim team is a team that gets out even earlier because they have two stops along the way that have, they have to make. Um, but like I said, m the majority of our student athletes are really good students and they know how to balance time. And I've seen a lot of student athletes actually doing work on the bus, the real dedicated ones. The young man who went to Harvard would study on the bus going back and forth to baseball games all the time. Most of his friends weren't, but that's why he went to Harvard and the rest of them didn't, you know. Um, let's see. What's the best way to get specific details about an athletic program at Brian McMahon? Um, the specific details, the best way is to get it from the head coach or talk to the players. Um, and Sports U is going to be a great way to go about doing that. Um, can students participate in the band and play sports? Um, yes, we've had a number of student athletes do this over the years. Is it common? No. Is it hard? Yes. Can it be done? Yes. Um, and I mean, we've had football players take off their pads and then wow. go play in the band at halftime. That has happened. I just think you need to have clear communication with the band director, Mr. Secchi, and whatever sport that your team plays, that these are the expectations. Um, can a girl swim on the girls' team and then the boys' team? The answer is no. You're only allowed one opportunity for that. Um, could a girl play field hockey and then go swim on the boys' team? Absolutely. Will you have to bring my child to an away game? The answer to this previously was always no, because we would have buses. However, the state is now looking at possibly waiving this rule and allowing parents to actually bring their kids to away games because we do possibly fear that with the coronavirus and with social distancing, that the bus transportations, the transportation system is going to be so taxed both financially and with resources that some of the parents might actually have to bring them to the games. That will be decided at a later date and clearly communicated to you. Um, my child wants to play a high school sport that they've never previously played. How likely is it they're going to make the team? Well, I mean, you can kind of look at the numbers. I'm going to go back to boys soccer again. Um, boys soccer is an example in which um, if you never played a sport, you're going to be going up um, and trying out against kids who've been playing this sport since the time they were young. It's definitely a skill-based sport. It's highly competitive. But then you take a look at, let's say, for example, the football team. Um, there's a number of players over the years who've never 
play the down of football, and then they join the football team and they excel. For example, this year we just had um, one of our student athletes, um, Lucas and Paul. He was from Haiti. People from Haiti don't play football. It's not offered. The only football they play is with their feet. But he was a big kid, big, strong kid. The coach saw him and um, saw him in the halls, had massive arms. Hey, you want to come play football? Now he's going to um, Southern Connecticut State University on a scholarship to play college football. So it depends on the sport. Um, and that's a question and conversation you can always have with the coach or with me. Um, how involved should parents be in high school athletics? You should be big cheerleaders for your student um, athlete and for their teammates. You should cheer. You should get behind them and support them at all times. You should support them through the tough times. Um, you should tell them that they need to think about, you know, sports as what life's like going to be. You're not going to always get your way. You need to be there, you know, when they're down. But you shouldn't tell them things that aren't necessarily true. Um, some of the worst things you can do is kind of tell them things that they want to hear instead of just kind of offering them support and trying to have them kind of work through um, anything that they might be struggling through. So parents should be supporters of the student athletes and the programs that they're in. And they should trust in the coaches that the coaches are doing the right thing because my coaching staff does. Um, uniforms are provided to um, our student athletes. If you have a vacation planned over Christmas break, should you try to cancel that now because my child wants to try out for the freshman basketball team? Should I cancel my trip? Um, I would say absolutely not. Don't do that. Just clearly communicate it to the coach. You're a freshman. We understand that. Um, but moving forward, um, if your son really loves basketball and you feel that they're going to be um, a varsity player one day, I strongly discourage you from planning any family trips over that break. Um, because um, more than likely when that student athlete comes back from that vacation, um, there'll be um, some time that they're going to have to make up um, not playing and probably residing on the bench for a little while. Um, I really want my child to get involved in athletics, but they're not very athletic. Do you have any recommendations? Um, you know, a lot of freshmen, especially boys, um, as they come into school, they haven't really hit puberty just yet. Um, so they're still little kids. And sometimes what ends up happening is within a year or two, they quickly mature. Um, and their bodies um, start to reconfigure themselves a little bit. So they might not be athletic at a very young age, but they may, when they start to get that core developed and that center of gravity established, that they start to actually evolve into something that's going to be um, a really positive experience for them. So I wouldn't, you know, encourage them to, if they've never played a sport before, go into the sports that don't require a lot of skill. Don't decide that, hey, I think it's going to be great for you to play baseball because we love the Yankees. It's probably not a good recommendation if they never played the sport before. But I can tell you right now, I know there's a lot of volleyball players and a lot of football players and that have never played um, that sport before high school, and they do very, very well. Um, my child wants to play college sports. Should they specialize in that sport or play multiple sports? Well, I can tell you that we had a signing ceremony recently and the majority of them actually played multiple sports. Our two career athletes this year um, were multiple sport athletes. Corey Morton was a baseball player and he ran indoor track and set records for us. And in the state, um, his experiences on the indoor track are only going to enhance his abilities when he gets to college to play baseball. Our female career athlete is going to Ohio State to play soccer, and she also was a gifted athlete. And she excelled and broke a number of records um, on the indoor and outdoor tracks. Um, as Brandon said earlier, playing multiple sports is going to allow you to develop your body. It's going to prevent injury. It's also going to put you possibly in a situation where you can learn from your teammates. I think it's a good experience sometimes that you're the best in the sport, but it's also a great experience where you're a role player at times. Changing those roles, wearing different hats, only teach you to be a better teammate and a better person. So I strongly feel that um, if your child wants to play college sports, that they should play as many sports as possible. And um, you can talk to any college coach. They love multiple sport athletes. If you look at who gets drafted in the NFL, most of them are multiple sport athletes. Okay. Um, 
at this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the chat to see if there's any new questions out there. I know it had one out there. Let's see. Um, so the question was, can students who go to CGS still play on the tennis team? Um, yes, as long as they're a Brian McMahon High School student um, and they live in the district as a freshman. If, let's say, they had an older, older sibling um, and they a sophomore, junior, senior, and they lived in Fairfield, they can still play on the tennis team too. So I hope that answered your question. Any new freshman coming in who lives in town can – um, play at the Center for Global Studies. How do you sign up for Sports U? Um, I will go back and show you to do that because I know it's so important. I'm going to go back to the Brian McMahon High School website. So what you're going to end up doing, you're going to go to the home site, start from the beginning. Okay, this is where you're going to arrive at once you get to McMahonAthletics.com. What you'll then do is you'll scroll down to the bottom and you just hit documents. And then there, what I have for you is a list of ways that you can join the sport specific teams. I can tell you that the fall sports are active. You may say, hey, I want my son to play baseball. That coach might not be up and running just yet. So all you have to do is click on that. Let's say for boys soccer, and you're going to get the access code and the joining information. Go back to new share. All right. um, are there any, let's see, go back to that chat. I'm sorry for my navigation. Um, for fall sports, when do students need to sign up by? So that question there is a little loaded because if I give you the right answer you're going to fall behind. Um, a student can register up to the very last day or the day before tryouts or even the day of tryouts of all the information's in. But here's the issue. If you don't register and you don't sign up in sports you, your coach isn't going to know about you. And if your coach doesn't know about you, you're not going to be getting any information. So if you wait to the last minute and register, you might not even know where tryouts are because you're not in the information flow. So the best thing you can do is register your students, um, get them out there, have them figure out, hey, you know what, I'm interested in trying out for this team, or maybe two teams, have them register for both teams, have them join both sports you, get the information flow going, and you get a feel because a lot of these coaches are gonna be having some practice sessions coming up starting July 6th um, in person, um, to condition and get their skills back. And they might really fit in with a team. They might really like the people they're with. So that's my answer to you. I would do it right after we're done. I think that's the most important thing because even like tomorrow night, the girls soccer team is going to have a um, freshman orientation for just a freshman. Because I know my coaches are eager to go and I know my student athletes are as well. So the earlier you do it, the better. Um, are there any other questions out there? All right. Um, what I um, just want to say is that I, I want to let you know that your child's going to be in really good hands at Ryan McMahon High School. Um, when the coronavirus um, hit us, our football coach came to me and said, hey, I got a really good idea. I got a lot of struggling players on my team whose parents are out of work. Um, they have family members that are sick. What do you think about us possibly raising some money for some um, of our families? At the same exact time, Nick Bonas, who was in the Center for Global Studies, he came up with basically the same idea. Both of those coaches, um, I shouldn't say both coaches, Nick's not a coach, but both of those teachers, um, what they ended up doing was they shared their ideas and then a synergistic type of um, situation took place. And within weeks, um, we have been feeding a number of families. It was just released um, last week that the Brian McMahon community has raised over $21,000 to feed um, our family members that are struggling. And that's amazing. Um, I know um, like our girls soccer team, they raised $3,000 for the cause and some other teams have done the same exact thing. So McMahon has a really, really good community feel, you know, um, being a student athlete, you're going to 
have your child cut across a bunch of different cultures. You're going to meet a lot of different people. It's just a really, really rewarding experience um, that you don't get in a lot of other schools. So like I said, your child's going to be in really good, um, a good um, situation. Is P-Tech Sports still linked to Brian McMahon? Um, I'm not sure what P-Tech Sports is. I know there's the P-Tech program at Noak High, and you're housed at Noak High. So if you are going to P-Tech over there, you should um, play sports at Noak High School. That's where you should be going if you go to P-Tech. But if you go to CGS, you should be playing at McMahon if you're a Noak resident. Okay. Are there any other questions at all? Any parents want to ask a verbal question at all? Now, Pete, do you want to say something? I see your hands up touching the top of the Golden Gate Bridge. <laughs> no, I'm just, uh, I just wanted to say I'm really psyched about having a freshman team this year. And uh, as you mentioned earlier, in my, going into my eighth season, there's plenty of years that I've had freshmen on varsity that made a difference on varsity. So, you know, whether you've played or not, uh, definitely come out and uh one of those situations a few years back Meredith Pellegrino came in playing freshman year uh really not playing organized volleyball and she was able to get a uh, a full ride to Ryder Collins playing division one so as long as your kid is motivated and has the drive we have coaching staffs in all our sports that will provide what they need to get them to their goals Thank you, Coach, and I couldn't agree more with that. If um, you have friends um, that you talk to who weren't able to attend this meeting or any of the other sessions, I'm um, crossing my fingers that when this is over, I'm going to hit stop on the record button, and then I'm going to upload it to YouTube, um, and that link will be posted um, on the Brian McMahon High School website. So I'm hoping that's going to work. Um, if I didn't answer a question that you have or if you think of one in the next couple of days, send me an email. And um, I'll do my best to um, give you um, a response back in a, a quick time. Um, the other thing you can also do is give me your phone number as well. I think sometimes it's best, especially early on, that you and I develop relationships um, verbally. So I, I, I think when you can tap into other senses, it just kind of enhances the um, experience that you actually have. Um, and are there any out-of-state football games? No, our football team does not have any out-of-state games. Um, we are part of the Football Alliance. Um, all the teams in the state are, and you play your conference schedule, and then you have two non-conference opponents. So there's not time to play out-of-state opponents at this time. All right. Well, um, I wish everybody the best of luck. Stay safe. Um, enjoy this beautiful weather that we have out there. And once again, um, congratulations to all the graduates, and welcome to the Brian McMahon High School family. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, coaches and athletes. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Sean. No problem.